Joining me on Impact Catalyst is Helen French and Jordan Thomas. We're here today to celebrate Jordan's win uh, in the dance category for the Charlie Honchel uh, Scholarship through Tampa Bay Businesses for Culture and the Arts. Good to see you both. Hi, thanks for having me. Good to see you. Well, as we, as we look at uh, and celebrate Jordan, uh, let's talk a little bit, Helen, about uh, you've been doing this now for a while. Uh, t- tell us about your process, uh, how you how you look at the, the submissions and, and why you ultimately, uh, that process led you to Jordan. Sure. Um, I think this is my fifth year, maybe. I'm not positive, but I've been doing this for a handful of years for TVBCA, and it's like my favorite event to do with them. Um, my process, I really like to see how well I can get to know the dancer through their writing, through samples of their work, and just through the recommendations that are sent in on their behalf. And it creates this really beautiful picture of um, the best you can without actually meeting someone of, of someone's aspirations, maybe some struggles they've had, some challenges they face and overcome. And it's really, I think, um, just it's it's a great experience. And Jordan really stuck out, not just because um, she submitted a piece of choreography and she spoke really eloquently about the work that she was making and why she was making it and what she was exploring. And I thought that showed some maturity for a young artist. And then um, she also sent in a sample of herself dancing. And I found it just, it was beautiful watching her move and she really connected with me through virtually through the camera. And I thought, wow, if she can do that on the camera, I wonder what it's like in, you know, in real life, if I were to be sitting in the audience. And those two work samples just presented a really strong application, but showed a dynamic range. And I think Jordan, um, then I was reading through what, where she'd like to go next and what she was looking towards to doing. And she just seemed to have this heart of an artist beyond just dancing, but there's like something more in intangible maybe in there that came through and everything I read about her. And then her um, recommendations were glowing and very realistic, grounded in some like, this is a mature young woman who's working, who has an extracurricular, she's involved in her community, but she's still um, making herself into a young artist. So when you combine all that together, Jordan just kind of blew me away. So I'm, I'm delighted that she won this year. That doesn't sound so bad, does it, Jordan? <laughs> no, thank you so much, Miss Helen. You're welcome. My pleasure. And so let's let's riff on the. There's a nice observation. Heart of an artist. Do you feel like you have the the heart of an artist, and and why so? Um, I do feel like I have the heart of an artist because um, dance has always been my passion since a very young age. It's always helped me through struggles, challenges. I knew dance was something that I could always turn to. So I believe I have the heart of an artist because I feel like it takes the true love for the art form to really have the passion to pursue it and, you know, love what you do. That's great. Can you walk us through your process a little bit as you're, as you're creating and, 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 and imagining, uh, you know, things that, that the choreography and moves and, and, and expression, can you kind of talk? talk through how that that operates for you well for choreographing pieces this is actually my very first year choreographing um i started because i would take a choreography class in school but i found out i really loved it um my process for that um i start by doing research on like topics that i find interesting and i see what stands out to me and then i also like look around like going through my whole day like something that really stands out to me something different and then I pull from there and see, like, how can I make this more dynamic? Because you can't just do, like, I call it, like, a flat piece, just, like, like a piece about, like, trees. Like, you need to do, like, a tree cycle or, like, how a tree grows or how a tree is broken down in a storm, you know? And then for dancing, I like to first remember all of the movements and work through and articulate, like, every movement. I like to work on focal points, like, where am I looking? Where is my head directed to? Where is my shoulder at? And then I also like to draw from within on like my own story. And I usually put something that I'm going through at the moment into my dancing so that it makes it look more authentic and you can like tell that there's effort in the movement. So when you, and with the dance, then you, there's a technical aspect to it, the, you know, the, the craft element of making sure you understand the moves, understand the positions of, of your head and body parts, and then you wrap that all in, in, in the emotion that, that you 
uh, you find inspiration from and in, in, in things you're going through. Is that is that kind of where, where you went with that? Yes, that's correct. That's great. Uh, let's talk a little bit about your future. So you won the scholarship. Uh, what is what do the next couple of years hold for you? Um, I was accepted into the dance program at USF. So I'll be starting in the summer. And then in fall, I'm going to declare a double major in physical therapy. So I'll be majoring in dance for the next four years. And then after that, I want to go to grad school at Howard University and again, get um, my master's degree in physical therapy and dance. Wonderful. Sounds like a decent plan. Helen, so as you as you reviewed the submissions, uh, you know, did you notice any emerging themes this year? Obviously, we've gone through a pandemic. Uh, you've done done this for a number of years. Um, how did they come together for you this year? You know, something I noticed across the board um, from all the applicants, I guess one of the themes was just like there's there's a huge level of perseverance, but the the depth of the applications and kind of the soul searching that I saw come out. It just seemed to have more nuance this year. And I don't know if that's the pandemic, but every applicant had like layers to themselves that um, either they were getting really adept at explaining themselves virtually since we've been virtual for so long now, or it it, or really just was kind of forcing young artists to um, expand how they submitted applications and but one of the themes I saw was a lot of perseverance and I saw a lot of joy. I was, it was lovely to review everyone. There was a lot of happiness to be moving and to be dancing and creating. Wonderful. And Jordan, I'm going to give you a, just a random weird fun question, but if you had to only choose one kind of dance to do for the rest of your life, which one would it be? Do you ballet, have definitely. Ballet. I love ballet. That's great. Congratulations again. It's a great win. Uh, Well-deserved. Uh, we'll connect again uh, during, uh, we're going to broadcast the, the final um, uh, celebration award show and where you actually get your award. So we'll get to see it one more time, but it was really nice to be able to spend this one-on-one time with you and Helen uh, to really celebrate this uh, this really important win and uh, of the Charlie Honchul Scholarship. Thank you so much for choosing me. This is a great honor. Well, congratulations. It's well-deserved. I look forward to seeing everything that you make in the future. Thank you. 